Good morning, Atonement. Uh, we have a couple of announcements for you today. Uh, first, from the choir, our uh, cantata, Good Friday cantata, will be this Friday evening at 8 p.m. So we hope to see you there. Uh, now, I know there's a couple other announcements from the congregation. So first person here gets the mic. Good morning, everybody. Just a reminder that it's our week to uh, prepare meals and deliver them to the Family Promise Day Center for the two families that are there. So thank you to the people um, who have agreed to do that. Lorraine will be calling to remind you and give you the code to the, to the uh, day center. So prayerfully consider all these families this week um, that are hungry and don't ha have the housing they need. Hi there. I just wanted to uh, remind everyone, it's in the announcements, uh, but Pastor Ryan and his wife, Melissa, are going to be in town, and Tuesday night from 6.30 to 8, they're going to have coffee at City Brew on Main Street, so anybody that just wants to stop in and say, hi, how are you doing? Welcome to Atonement and Billings. You're more than welcome, and they'd love to see you. Thank you. Busy morning. My name's Jackie, I'm on the Christicon board and I'm here this morning to remind you that on April 30th from four to seven is our yearly benefit auction. For those of you who don't know what Christicon is, it's the Lutheran Bible Camp, past McLeod, Natural Bridge, and then a short little trip up a dirt road. Ah, <laughs> uh, some of you do know. On the top of the mountain, and we have several camps during the summer middle school, high school, family weekends, out-of-state out of groups that come in, trails. There are 27 on staff this summer. We're really excited. We've got a great group of kids. So I'm here this morning because we have a raffle and we're doing some pre-sale. We have a beautiful third of a carat with white gold Yogo Sapphire necklace that has been generously designed and donated by Robert Morgan at Riddle's Jewelry. I have it here. I'm just going to pass it around. You guys can look at it throughout the day. And then after the service, I'll be selling raffle tickets. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to remind you, if you order butter braids uh, from the preschool, we are they're in the freezer right now. So I have sorted, and they're ready to go. Thanks. On behalf of evangelism, I would like to invite all of you to come over to Winstone today at 1 o'clock. We're going to do a sing-along, so the more voices, the better. And we'll have some goodies there, so you can have some goodies along with singing. And we're going to do it in Metal Arc Landing. So as you come in the front door, you're going to turn to the right, and you'll find an open area. And that's where we'll plan on doing the sing-along and the name that tune. So join us at 1. Thanks. Wow. Uh, just um, remind everybody that the youth are going to be hosting the Easter breakfast. Um, we'll be doing that from following the sunrise service all the way up till the 10 a.m. service. Um, lots of pancakes, muffins, fruit, all the goodies for breakfast. Um, and then also today, following service, is our jam, our youth group for our third to sixth grade. So if they want to join me in the youth room, they can grab a donut and some lemonade and um, head down to the youth room and we'll hang out and yeah, have some fun. Thanks Speaking of Christicon uh, that Jackie mentioned uh, that short road uh, many Many years ago, uh, I went up to Christicon, and on the way up, just happened to get a flat tire on that road, and then on the way back from Christicon, 
happened to get a flat tire on that road. Uh, I've always remembered that road, but the road is not the same. The road is much improved and waiting uh, for your, your journey up there. Uh, beautiful place. Um, good to be with you again. This, of course, is Palm Sunday and a beautiful day we have. Uh, this is the beginning of Holy Week. Uh, holy comes from a Hebrew word, kadosh, and it means different, unusual, strange. Holy Week is different than any other week this year. We are different. We are holier this week, in a sense, than any other week this year, because this is the week of our Lord's passion. Uh, Palm Sunday, Jesus comes into Jerusalem. Monday, Thursday begins the great three days, the great tritium, uh, the Lord's Supper, Good Friday, and of course, the resurrection of Jesus. So uh, a signal part of our Christian faith, and indeed holy, set apart that we also may be a holy people. I've been in the habit of sharing with you a teaching moment before worship and uh, would do so today uh, about Palm Sunday and the donkey. In the Bible, a word, a symbol, or an episode may look incidental, but on closer examination, it completely enlarges our understanding of what is going on. This happens in the Bible a great many times, and it happens today with this figure of a donkey. In the Old and New Testaments, the donkey opens our eyes to the wider meaning of faith in Jesus Christ. In the first chapter of Isaiah, the Lord says, the ox knows its owner and the donkey its master's crib, but my people does not know me. What a judgment. The dumb animals recognize the Lord, but his people do not. This was comically dramatized by Balaam's donkey in the book of Numbers, when suddenly the donkey, whom Balaam had been abusing, turns back and speaks to Balaam saying that Balaam is the one who was stubborn and dumb when it comes to understanding the Lord. And in the Christmas story, a donkey is said to have transported Mary to Bethlehem and later to Egypt. And the donkey is among those animals in the manger scene that recognizes the Messiah. You may crack a smile but the donkey is also known as an ass, from the Greek onos, meaning a yoke, a burden, or under the yoke. The ass was a beast, a burden. On Palm Sunday, Jerusalem was filled with Jews who had come to celebrate Passover, little knowing that that coming Passover day on Friday, it was not a lamb, but Jesus, who would be sacrificed. This day, Jesus rode not a horse, a symbol of war, but he rode a donkey, a symbol of peace. Fulfilling Zechariah's prophecy 600 years earlier, that the king would come lowly, and riding on a donkey. People threw palm branches, symbols of royalty and victory, thinking that Jesus was a military Messiah who had come to liberate the Jews from Roman oppression. Realize that because Jesus rode this donkey, it was no more an ordinary donkey. Moreover, because of Jesus, none of us is just ordinary. Jesus can use us and give our lives a daily and eternal purpose. 
Donkeys, like people, can be regarded as lowly and unattractive. But Jesus regards each of us as significant and beautiful, even as Jesus himself became despised and disfigured on his way to the cross. It was fitting then that this lowly donkey faithfully carried the burden of Jesus, even as Jesus faithfully carries all the burdens of the world. When Jesus breathed his last upon the cross, imagine that donkey standing faithfully by and the setting sun casting a shadow along the back of the donkey, along the back and starting at the withers going down the shoulder, the sign of the cross, a sign that donkeys still bear to this day. This Palm Sunday, that donkey is a sign to us of a creature who recognizes the Lord, obediently serves the Lord, and is faithful even in tribulation. And like the donkey, we bear the sign of the cross, reminding us that we are people of hope and power who in Christ are anything but ordinary. You have with you the script, the cry of the whole congregation, a reminder that we are to participate in this as though we were there that first Palm Sunday. And in a sense, we were there and are there. And after we get through with this, may we withhold our conversation but dismiss in silence until we get to the narthex where there will be time for a conversation. When Jesus drew near to Bethphage and Bethany at the mount that is called Olivet, he sent ahead two of his disciples, saying, Go into the village opposite. There you will find a colt tied on which no one has ever yet sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it, you shall say, the Lord has need of it. So those who were sent went away and found it as he had told them. And as they were untying the colt, its owners said to them, why are you untying the colt? And they said, the Lord has need of it. And they brought it to Jesus, and throwing their garments on the colt, they set Jesus upon it. We invite kids first. Come on up. If you don't have a palm, I have some up here. We're going to have our, our parade. While the kids are parading, we're inviting everyone else to parade and uh, share their offering into the basket.
this time and we will continue to sing. And as he rode along, they spread their palms and garments on the road. As he was now drawing near at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and to praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying... Pharisees in the multitude cried to him, Teacher, rebuke, rebuke your disciple. They're calling you the Christ. Tell them to shut up. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the very stones themselves would cry out. And when he drew near and saw the city, he wept over it, saying, Would that even today you knew the things that make for peace. 
but now they are hid from your eyes. O Jerusalem, the days shall come upon you when your enemies will cast up a bank about you and surround you and hem you in on every side and dash you to the ground, you and your children within you, and they will not leave one stone upon another in you because you did not know the time of your visitation. Now the feast of unleavened bread drew near, which is called Passover. And the temple priests were seeking how to put Jesus to death, for they feared the people. Then Satan entered into Judas called Iscariot, who was of number of the twelve. He went away and conferred with the temple priests and officers how they might betray him to them. And they were glad and engaged in him to give money. So he agreed and sought an opportunity to betray him to them in the absence of the multitude. Then came the day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. So Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover for us, that we may eat it. He said to him, But where, Lord, where will you have us prepare it, and what are we to do? He said to them, Behold, when you have entered the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house which he enters and tell the householder, The teacher says to you, Where is the guest room where I am to eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room furnished. There make ready. And they went and found it as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover. And when the hour came, he sat at the table and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I shall not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on, I shall not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise the cup after supper, saying, The cup which is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. This is the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. And the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Let us come forward and commune.
But behold, the hand of him who betrays me is with me on the table. For the Son of Man goes as it has been determined. But woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. Is it I? He answered, He who has dipped his hand in the dish with me will betray me. Oh, it would have been better for that man if he had not been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Is it I, Master? Jesus said to him, You have said so. Simon Peter was indignant, but not I, he said. And he declared, Though they all fall away from you, I will never leave you. Peter, truly as I say to you, this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even if I must die with you, I will never deny you. And so said all the disciples over and over And he came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives. And the disciples followed him. And when he came to the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not enter into temptation. You must not into temptation, but deliver us, deliver us. And he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, and knelt down and prayed, Father, if thou art willing, Remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. My Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Great, although I feel so 
from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping for sorrow. And he said to them, Why do you sleep? Rise and pray, that you may not enter into temptation. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, even the evil within ourselves. While he was still speaking, there came a crowd, and the man called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He drew near to Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said to him, Judas, would you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? Judas said, Hail, Master. And the disciples saw what would follow. They said, Lord, shall we strike with a sword? And, and one of them struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, No more of this. And he touched his ear and healed him. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Jesus said to those who had come out against him, When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me. But this is your hour and the power of darkness. Then they seized him. Then they seized him and led him away, bringing him to the high priest's house. Peter followed at a distance, and when they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. Then amazed, seeing him sit in the light, said, This man also with me. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. And a little later, someone else saw him and said, You also are one of them. But Peter said, Man, I am not. An hour later, another insisted, saying, Certainly this man also was with him, for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are saying. And immediately, while he was still speaking, the cock crowed. And the Lord turned and looked at Peter. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out, and he wept bitterly. Now the men who were holding Jesus mocked him and beat him. They blindfolded him and demanded, Prophesy, who is it that struck you? And they spoke many other words against him, reviling him. When the day came, the assembly of the elders of the people gathered together and led him to their council. And they said, If you are the Christ, tell us. But he said to them, If, I tell you, you will not believe, and if, ask you now, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man shall be seated at the right hand of the power of God. And they said, Are you Son of God? And he said to them, You say that I am. And they said, Blasphemy. What further testimony do we need? We have heard it ourselves from his own lips, 
Blasphemy, O oh, blasphemy. Then the whole company of them arose and brought him before Pontius Pilate. And they began to curse him, saying, We found this man perverting our nation and forbidding us to give tribute to Caesar and saying that he himself is Christ the King. And Pilate asked him, Are you the King of the Jews? And he answered him, You have said so. And Pilate said to the chief priests and the multitudes, I find no crime in this man. But they were urgent, saying, He stirs up the people, teaching throughout Galilee, even to this place. And when Pilate heard that he was a Galilean of Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod. For he was vehemently accused, and treated with contempt and mocked, and arrayed in gorgeous purple, and then sent back again. Pilate said to the rulers of the people, You have brought me this man as one who was perverting the people, and after examining him, behold, I did not find him guilty of any of these charges. I will therefore chastise him and release him. They all cried out together, Away with his man. Barabbas, a man who had been thrown into prison for insurrection and for murder. Pilate addressed them once more, desiring to release Jesus. He shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Why? What evil has he done? I find no crime in him deserving of death. I'll chastise him and I'll release him. But they were urgent, demanding with loud cries that he should be crucified. And their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave sentence that their demand should be granted. He released the man who had been jailed for murder. But, he, but Jesus he delivered up to their will. But Jesus, he delivered over to their will. Yes, they There followed him a great multitude of women who bewailed and lamented him. But Jesus, turning to them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that never bore, and the breast that never gave suck. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it dries?
Two others also, who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with him. And when they came to the place which is called the Skull, there they crucified him, and the criminals, one on the right and one on the left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Forgive us our trespasses. And they cast lots to divide his garments. Forgive us our trespasses. And the people stood by watching, but the rulers scoffed at him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself if he is the Christ of God. Forgive us our trespasses. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him vinegar. There was an inscription over him. This is the king of the Jews. Forgive us our trespasses. Forgive us, O Lord, our trespasses. One of the criminals who was hanged with him railed at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence, and we justly? But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Forgive us our trespasses. Deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom. And Jesus said to him, And the power. Truly, truly, I say to you. And the glory. Today you will be with me in paradise. Forever and ever. Amen. It was now about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour, while the sun's light failed. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from the top to the bottom. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. And all the multitude who had assembled to see the sight when they saw what had taken place, returned home, beating their breasts, and all his acquaintances and the women who had followed him from Galilee stood at a distance and saw these things.
was a man named Joseph from the town of Arimathea, a good man, a righteous man, one looking for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then he took it down and wrapped it in a linen shroud and laid him in a rock-hewn tomb where no one had ever yet been laid. It was the day of preparation and the Sabbath was beginning. The women who had come with him from Galilee followed and saw the tomb and how his body was laid. Then they returned and prepared spices and ointment. On the Sabbath, they rested according to the commandment. Please rise for the sending song. Walk with the Lord this week to Calvary the tomb, towards the promise of Easter. Thanks be to God. Let us depart with silence and self-reflection. <laughs> 